so starting to record. Um, so at OSC we not only develop the, the, the technology openly, but we also aim to distribute the enterprise that comes from it, and that we call the distributed enterprise concept. So it's critical to our work because we feel that, that uh, the promise of open hardware goes all the way up to changing people's lives in tangible ways because hardware is tangible. So therefore, how do you change people's lives? It's, it's what people do for a living, and therefore, uh, enterprise is a natural fallout. So we talk about the long-term view of tran a transition where people uh, get, get to self-determination by enabling tools, so, so the open hardware has a very critical effect on what actually people do for a living. Now that's not what we've been doing for the last decade. We've just been prototyping stuff and finding what works and not. And one of the main discoveries from all that time was that, yeah, I mean, technology works. Uh, there's definitely limits to what technology, to access to technology. When we started on this land, it, I mean, I didn't really know that. I thought, okay, well, you can research stuff, you can find stuff on the internet. But uh, there's limits to that. So when we came out here, um, I read all the books, you know, on permaculture, appropriate technology, renewable energy, and this and that. I studied as much of that as I could during my PhD. In fact, I almost got kicked out because I was doing probably more of, of that than my PhD work as I was getting alienated from fusion energy. Um, so, you know, I thought I was so, somewhat prepared, but then you hit the real, real situation, the real land. Um, and it's different. It's it's yeah. It's uh, I, I got to tell you that that I, I definitely was not prepared. I didn't have any practical hands-on experience. So well, uh, but we did learn over this time that yeah, technology does work. That's that's a great thing. But it's a totally different thing than than developing an enterprise. So enterprise is like developing technology too. In fact, it's like the second half. If you think that. If you have a product and you can sell it, well, no, that's, I don't think that's really how it works. I think uh, running a business, that's like a whole, whole different game. And you have to put a lot of energy to it. We haven't done put a lot of energy to it, uh, but these days we are. And we, we're talking about uh, the ideas of distributive enterprise. It doesn't just happen automatically. Like we thought that people would just pick up our work and it would spread like wildfire. Like for example, the brick press in 2008. That hasn't happened. Uh, definitely significant barriers to uptake such as learning or capital the fact that it's expensive you got to have skills and money to buy stuff materials a workshop and all that so it's much harder like probably a thousand times harder than software uh, if you try to make a comparison um, but I think we can uh, just like with the technology development can break down the, the enterprise aspects into main main things that we can develop collaboratively so uh, what we're doing right now is with the seed eco home, given that everybody wants a house, it's a big, it's a huge market. It's like trillions. Uh, one of the main sectors of, of the economy. Um, if you take a look at the, <coughs> the whole economy being about 100 trillion, how much of it is wrapped up in, in construction and building? It's like maybe a quarter, or maybe 20% or so. It's huge, huge, very, very big. And we went on to the pursuing the, the seed eco home or the construction aspect much more seriously. Actually, when the COVID hit, we were, we were getting into a lot of this steam camps work with 3D printers and electronics, coding, and all kinds of uh, small scale way to involve people around 3D printers, which any, anybody can get into. And then kind of COVID crushed it. So we kind of asked what's, okay, what next? And housing came up as definitely, okay, that's a way to meet like the number one cost in a person's life. It's a very important topic. And we said, okay, if you're going to solve, solve problems, let's solve that one first. Well, because we worked on it quite a bit already. We, we did the CEB press and uh, all the construction we had to do here, we just bootstrapped it and, and did what we could. And now are formalizing that and getting all code approved and all of that. So around the CD Go Home, I mean, you know, what it, it builds on the, the years of the learning that we have done around construction, also the machines and altogether open source work, but it, it is also a project that we treat just like all the other things, a highly modular system of building blocks. So using the construction set approach, modularity, scalability, um, expandability, for example, of the CD Eco Home that could be used to do as small as a micro house of 256 square feet or a McMansion. 
size scale thing where you can just keep building on it um, did, up did to you, three did floors. You show the big model? I did the other day. We mm -hmm. kind of showed the the expanded model of the house. Um, but let's let's actually take a look at what what the initial goal of the the enterprise session was. So if we go to um, you know we have the announcement for the summer X. Um, it, it's supposed to be around the CD the home, and and it's kind of focused. But also because we use a construction set approach, that starts with stick framing right now. But it's definitely next year we want to deploy the same thing in CEB. So that's that's for starters, and then getting into all the supporting technology. There's there's aquaponics. How about the micro factory that you can attach to your greenhouse to to your uh, workshop or whatever? Uh, basically a productive ecosystem where the house now turns from being a complete consumer item to something that produces food water energy and products you know in your micro factory so it's, it's part of a larger system it fits into the whole package and it embodies the machines the automation the collaboration aspect so so it's a good choice and that's why we went with it and are very intent on developing this model and and we're not kidding about it we're saying okay we're gonna start an enterprise come December Right after the this this whole summer session, we're building for the first real client. That's probably going to be Brian, one of our friends from Kansas City. Uh, but the idea was to train people, so people like Christian, uh, he'll be here. Uh, others were saying, okay, we're showing up and we're going to build this house. Jeff's going to be here. I don't know who else is going to be here by the end of the the session. But we're trying to train people, and we're also getting into, right now. We're pursuing the as avenues of of GI Bill where people who can get money through the GI Bill can come here to get trained through apprenticeships. So we are actually currently setting up a formal apprenticeship through, apprenticeships through the Department of Labor, which allow people to get some benefits from the GI Bill to, to get into that. So there's uh, that's definitely moving forward. But the idea there is, how do we scale this? Like um, The goal right now is to double operations every year in terms of revenue and impact. Uh, we're at 200K this year, so next year will be like 400, 800, Etc. Well, how about 10x? 10x is easier than 2x. How about we get a, we train a bunch of people to, to do the construction part? Well, if we can build great housing and there's demand for them, well, there's the whole business development part, uh, which we're working on right now, and we're prototyping still the product at this point and moving forward. So, uh, but if we look at the announcement, what's there is a little bit of a description. So if we, if we just go back into the summer of extreme design build which we just started. <clears throat> What's the enterprise session about? So it was advertised as, here's a, here's a little about section. We get into there, what is the enterprise? What do we cover? And there was somewhat of a tentative, uh, uh, basically, here's more about the CD Home enterprise track within the description. So this from the, the announcement takes you to the enterprise track, talking about in, intended audience, co-creation. We also have some remote participants that, that are uh, taking part. Uh, it's about developing a digital model for a highly replicable house, um, which we call Housing 2.0. You can take a look at that. Um, and the topics are many, uh, from the very collaboration, uh, like how do we design this thing, OSC culture and OSC specifications. There's a whole bunch of, uh, like, if you, okay, can somebody maybe mirror this? For me, like Hampus, can you maybe connect to the screen? So, um, I mean, we're not, we're not pulling the design specifications out of thin air. We have thought a lot about what specific properties go into this system. And there are actually quite a few of them. And you gotta keep track of all of them because otherwise it won't make sense to you. Why are we doing things a certain way? And we're definitely trying to push the limit on, on doing things differently and innovating constantly. Um, so, but we do start with OSE specifications, which is about 50 to 100 different points trying to break down. like. What does appropriate, open source, collaborative, scalable, modular technology look like? What are the social impacts of that and trying to capture that in a general framework for what, so that others, when they're collaborating, we can be on the same page in terms of what are we developing for? And a lot of times it's about models that are buildable by individuals, distributed is, is definitely a key. But also because it's scalable, it can be taken to larger scale operations. When we design a GVCS, it's typically, as the name implies, global village. It's village scale. What's village scale? Dunbar's number. That's about 200 people of 
people who can know each other face to face. So that's kind of the scale we, we tried to design for and the supporting technology that would be relevant to that scale of operation to literally rebuild civilization from the ground up. So say take this facility right here, yeah, um, we could evolve to say around a Dunbar's number for a fully functional community that, that has access and has uh, actually produces all the tech just just about all the technology it 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 needs on a very small scale. And in fact, the promise of the, the whole global village construction set is that any parcel of land, if you got soil, plants, water, rocks, sunlight, uh, those ingredients make up all of civilization. You know, so if we have those uh, those resources, can we do that from any parcel? That's kind of the the bigger framework. And at the same time, when we came out here, uh, found myself definitely unprepared with what training I had in the theory of the PhD, but also the practice of trying to read a bunch of books. Um, no, that, I don't think I was pre well prepared. And, and, but one of the main things that comes out is that you have to get to a certain level of uh, efficiency and effectiveness of technology that allows you to do this well. And the knowledge is out there, uh, but if you, if you assess the kind of knowledge that's available, there's a lot of stuff available all over the place that's at lower quality, but if you talk about a refined, high quality, enterprise level stuff, very limited. Like at just about anything in open hardware is like that. There's very few examples of things that actually work and are still open source. So uh, it kind of looks like things are open source, but when you look under the hood, you try to do anything, you'll see it doesn't exist. Like for example, aquaponics, you think, oh, maybe it's open source. Well, no, like if you're, if you're trying to actually work an integrated system that's economically feasible. Well, we still don't have that. We got quite far on it, but still, you can't just pick that off and, and create a replicable enterprise from somebody that that is actually sharing it. So that's the distributive enterprise aspect. The idea that as you develop the <coughs> the hardware and the enterprise, your goal is to train <coughs> others to effectively get yourself out of business doing it. Because if you can train enough people doing that then you can continue innovating. So the open source model is completely about, all about innovation. It's, um, in, in our view, it's, we, I guess we are uh, innovative minded like that for all this time we've been prototyping, discovering new things, um, reinventing the wheel or not. Um, but it's um, that kind of nature of distributed enterprise we feel can, if it's appropriate scale, not huge scale, it can continue to to expand in innovation because it's got low inertia and embodiment of, of trying to continue things the way they are because of your investment in, in, um, in the huge systems that have to live for a long time and therefore cause inertia. You can't innovate because you got to use up your capital investment to, to run forward with, 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 with what you invested in and you can't innovate anymore. That's kind of what happens to a lot of companies. Um, so you want to keep small. That's one of the keep small, keep to an appropriate scale. I mean, it can be huge in terms of impact, but it's just distributed. So um, we're not talking about inefficiency or like not replicable like junkyard parts. We're actually not talking about that. Um, junkyard parts like taking car parts and re reworking them into a working car or a working tractor. Not really. We, we do another thing like melt that down and get virgin steel. But as far as replicability aspects, part of the issue is that because of the disintegrated nature of, of technical design in general, Things are inefficient. They've got various inefficiencies or, um, you know, like if you're trying to take apart an engine or just a car, like unfixable, tractors unfixable anymore, uh, that kind of stuff. You know, like the junkyard we drive by on 33, like all these cars are almost like brand new. They're like all brand new and they're in a junkyard. Mm. That's because the way the industrial system is designed for that. And part of the, for us, open source means if people control that technology, then you're actually designing everything for a lifetime because people can maintain it and the junkyard goes away you have reusable parts that are truly reusable not like a thousand different versions of this uh, alternator that you can't fit it from one car to another so it's about really creating a whole pattern language of common parts a high level of standardization without dumbing things down still make it a const how do you reconcile that with just mass you know mass mindset and herd mentality well, no, you can still design for highly flexible modules that can be recombined in many, many ways, but they have enough similarity that they actually work to a high level of efficiency. It's, I mean, that's what people claim today that, that happens, like in the industry. Um, there's a lot of claim that, oh, yeah, you got all these interchangeable parts and this and that. 
I mean, definitely could be better. There's definitely, like from manufacturer to manufacturer, we've got a lot of, lot of difference. So that's part of this big vision of making an appropriate um, tech, like a technosphere, basically an appropriate technosphere that uh, is managed by humans 